Hey guys, Luke here, and welcome back to episode 25, I think, of the Warriors crew mode. We're in season 2, it's getting to round 26, it's the last game of the regular season. Um, we've got the minor premiership, um, one, pretty much. I don't know how to explain it better. Um, we got it sewn up, maybe? Is sewn up the right word? Or the right phrase, or whatever? I don't know. So, uh, while the loading screen's, you know, happening, as we see... Greg Bird with um, a Cooper Cronk kick. Um, take the time to ask if you can leave a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And with the likes, 15 is what we're going for. And 550 is coming up for subscribing. And make sure you leave comments and all that good stuff. And you know, I'm really in interested to see how my last few videos have been recepted. Uh, hopefully, they're okay. So, the Sharks line up here doesn't look that bad. Um, I'd I don't know what to think about. Maybe I can talk about the Barber thing this episode. Um, so yeah, Ben Barber, for those who don't know, there's been reports, maybe maybe even at the time this video goes up, he's signed. There's at least reports that he's going to sign with the Sharks and come back to Sydney. And as a Bulldogs fan, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Part of me is like, it's just saying, like, well, get, get on with it. Um, he's pretty shit now. Um, you know, it, it was for the best. But then the other part of me is still thinking, oh, Dalliam 2012, all he did for us, and he left us, and I'm still heartbroken from it. So, I don't know where I sit in this. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't care, sign with the Sharks, whatever. And other times I'm like, stuff him. He went to the Broncos, he wanted to, you know, end his career there, end your career there. I don't know, how, how, how do you feel about it? Whether you're a Bulldog supporter, or a non-Bulldog supporter, even a Broncos supporter, um view on it. Uh, also, a Sharks view on it would be quite good. Me, personally, I think Barbo just hit a hot streak that he probably won't hit again. Although, they said they said Hayne wouldn't hit it again, either. I thought Hayne was a bit of a one-hit. Actually, you know, you know, Hayne always did... He's way different, actually. Hayne, when you think about it, Hayne did a lot of, lot of, like, good stuff. But he, he was, didn't do it consistently. But, like... At the same time, it's just like it wasn't like he'd play like one good game a season, and he was like constantly like producing like really good stuff. Just look at State of Origin; like he was a State of Origin player before 2009 for many many years, um, doing some freaky stuff there. It's just that in 2009 he put it on a massive run, doing it week in week out for a period of time. But I didn't think he'd ever get back to that point where he's going to be doing it week in week out. And you know what? He did it this year, probably even more consistent. Maybe not quite as good but more consistent, um, where he actually did it, he actually kept it up for the whole season. As we go and score, I thought for a second there was going to be an intercept, I thought the pass was going to go all the way out to the winger, for whatever reason. I mean, you can't really explain why exactly, but you know how this game is. If you've seen um, all the other episodes, you understand, oh my god, how the hell are we going to keep this? Hopefully we can, we'll have a look at this one. Hopefully it'll be alright. We missed. How hard is it to kick that one? I want... Interested to see if the, the computer can kick that on. That'd be quite interesting, I think. Um, but yeah, back to the barber thing. Yeah, and well, I've dumped the hang comparison. It was a dumb comparison. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but barber though, that that 2012 season that was incredible. One of the best seasons individually for a person and and the team as well, obviously, because minor premiership. It was so good. Um, something that Hayne didn't do. Hayne put it up. Hayne put a streak of games together. Barber put a whole year together of incredible play. Um, but at the same time, he had a really great side. And you got to look at They got minor premiership. This wasn't like Hayne where he... I mean, some say he was carrying the side. And to a degree, he was. Um, but it was focused around him. But I wouldn't say he was carrying them. Um, if he got injured throughout the season, yes, he would have been stuffed. But that's, you know, because that's because the whole play... The whole side was designed around getting the most out of Ben Barber. Had it been designed around getting the most around Sam Perrett, like this year, you know, probably would have been a different result. We made the grand final a different way without Barber. Um, from just playing some grinding football, not looking to um, try and score from our own half all the time and just score every play like we were in 2012. That if I get back there, good boy, Manu. Good read from us. We knew it was happening. We got back there. Um... But yeah, with, with Barber, he's very talented, but at the same time, the, the game's progressing. Even in those two years, like, they've changed the obstruction rule a little bit, which doesn't help him very much. 
Plus, at, at the Broncos, I don't know what they were thinking. They made him put on weight um, for whatever reason. Maybe they, they were thinking of playing him in the halves, like, and then they just decided last minute to play Hoffman there. I don't know, but he got way too bulky. Um, so bulky that he was just ineffective anymore. Like he had, the, the key to Barb was his, his speed and footwork, and you take away his speed and he's got nothing left, which is what happened. He just became another regular regular player. Look how many times Ben Barber got run down this year compared to previous years. In previous years when Barber gets into space, he's gone. He's like Johnson, he's like all those guys. He was in that the sprint race in 2010 or whatever. I think him and Josh Morris like tired, I think. And they beat Inglis. I think Jared Hayne was the fastest at the NRL guys, but you see where I'm going there. He's a very fast player. When you take that's a knock on and doesn't get called, whatever. Don't even care. When you take away his speed, like I said, he's got nothing left. He's not hes not somebody who can just push off players left, right and centre like an English or just barge his way through. He relies on that and for some reason their coach, um, you know, took all of his effectiveness away. And you know what, that's another thing that makes me think. So I see Broncos fans are like, oh, why would they get rid of Griffin? We don't want Bennett, that sort of stuff. I think you're crazy. I think Griffin was a pretty shit coach, to be honest. Look at, look at all the years he's been there and what was his best result? Wasn't very good. Was it like I know for a, for a while people like with Henjack they weren't happy with Henjack they got Griffin and for the initial thing they're like oh yeah this is alright and then he was going shit and then they turned their backs on him and then all of a sudden they like him again because they went on a little bit of a run towards the end of the season which got them nowhere um, but yeah I, I just don't see the appeal of Griffin and that also brings me to a point um, when you see teams like the Dragons and the Sharks and stuff like see. I think it was Tigers when they were appointing their their coach. So obviously Steve Price got sacked from the Dragons, and he was a shit coach at the Dragons. I used to think like, why do these names get tossed up so much for Tigers roles and all that sort of stuff for another in a role in a role role when they've been so shit for their other teams? It's like they got fired for a reason. Like come on, like the the Titans Titans new coach um. His name Henry? No, Henry, I think, maybe. I don't know, the one he, he coached the Cowboys. It's like the, they just had Cartwright who couldn't win anything. They put all them put all their eggs in one basket with him, signed him up for a huge contract for a big big space of time. He done shit. He won nothing. Terrible performances. And then who they replaced him with? Someone who done the exact same thing with a way better roster. Like every every year you say the same thing. Oh, Cowboys should win it. They should go close this year, and they just never do. I'd say, I don't know. When, when was the closest they got? Like last year? I don't know. This year? And we throw an intercept to Carney. Luckily, we've got a touch on him to slow him down because that would have been a runaway. They wouldn't have caught him. Carney's very fast. Elijah Taylor getting back there, making a great tackle. I think that's Elijah Taylor. Unless there's another Taylor. Pretty sure I kept him. I was thinking of selling him, but I don't think his contract was up at the start of the season. Fishy Yahi, big hit on Bo Ryan. Get that up your Bo Ryan. And don't try and be a singer, Bo Ryan. You're not a singer or a rapper or whatever. Just don't. Not a big fan of his song, as you can tell. Um, if you can call it a song. Justice Crew wouldn't really call them singers. I don't, which is a bit strange because I actually don't mind Justice Crew. I just, I don't know. I can, you gotta acknowledge, they're not really good singers, it's more, they just have catchy sort of tunes. But at the same time, they're, they're ones where if I hear them too often, I'm like, ugh, turn this shit off. But if I hear it a few times, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, you know, it's catchy, it's fun. Um, where, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I was talking about the barber, barber. So, uh, oh, Hoffman through gap. Oh, there we go. There's a try. Another try. 8-0. That should wrap it up, really. I think we should be able to defend a 10-0 lead with little time remaining. 20 minutes or so. Now, I've really lost where I was going with this, with the barber thing. Oh, yeah, I was talking about whether I agree with with him coming back. And I was talking about coaches. So, yeah. Um, so, with it, when the Tigers came up, they were looking at, you know, Steve Price. Um, who else was there? I think, you know, just a whole bunch of shit coaches. And it's like, why? 
Why replace one shit coach with another shit coach? I, I, ju I just don't get it. Also, I don't, I don't get the, the whole Stuart Flanagan thing with the Sharks. Has he really been that good that you show that much loyalty to him? I don't know, is it just because the last coach there before that was Ricky Stewart? Bad play there. Thought we could have got a quick kick off. By the time we'd even taken the kick, we're over the line. Went for the intercept there. Went for a shot in there with Mateo. Couldn't get it. Good tackle by Felidi. He might, he might turn out to be a good signing for Sea Eagles. But I'm just thinking, like, the, the coaches in the NRL, I don't know how many quality coaches there actually are these days. I mean, you got your Bellamy, Hasler. I don't know, is Bennett... Does he get to the line? He does get to the line. Damn. Oh, at least we get to see a shot of them, whether they can kick it. And how do you, how the hell do you kick it from this distance? How wide are they going to kick it? Bullshit. Bullshit. No way. If I kick that... Watch how much this... If I kick it straight, let's see where it lands. How strong this wind is. So we kicked it straight. Oh, it goes straight. You're kidding me. I could have just kicked it at the goals and nothing would have happened. Nathan Friend on the goys. Get that up, you do goys. You shit player. He's not really shit. It's felt like saying it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, defend. Defend our asses off, guys. We ain't losing again. Not this... Not till the end of the season. Oh, I nearly made a bad read with Nilsson. I was going out to the centre there. All the stuff I talked about, about staying in your man, that sort of stuff, I'm not doing lately. Um, so yeah, I should probably finish up what I was talking about with the barber thing before I get sidetracked again. So my opinion on it, I think he should not go to the Sharks. I think the NRL should step in. Or maybe not step in. But I find it a little bit... A little bit shit how he talked about, like, when he was talking about signing with the Broncos, he's like, oh, I'm just happy the Bulldogs let me be released to go play for the Broncos. But if the Broncos hadn't signed me, I would have went and played another sport or I would have just got another job and that. And it's like, now now the time has come to put your money where your mouth is and you're coming back to Sydney. And don't give me this shit where you're like, oh, well, I've reconciled with my wife, I'm having another kid and all that. It's like, no, you don't get, like, no, just no. As we score another try, 14-6. Hopefully we can keep the goal. And then be 16-6. And uh, we pick up another victory either way. Um, we'll kick it straight. We'll see how much it curves. And it doesn't even curve at all. So it was strong enough because usually naturally it just turns from um, right to left with the right footed. That time it stayed straight. Oh, we'll pick up another win. And we held our promise of not losing for the rest of the regular season. Now we got to go through the finals, got to win three more games. And, um, yeah, I think we can do it. Definitely I think we can do it. Leave in the comments, can we do it? I think we can. Pretty confident. Um, especially finals times, you should step up then. I think the grand final last season, I didn't play that well. But we still end up winning, nonetheless. Um... Yeah, so let's look at the Dalian winner, Kevin Locke and Sean Johnson. Just one point in between. Steve Turner at the Roosters. Get real. No way. We're at Manu Vadova 13. Josh Hoffman 12. So what's the top 10? So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we had three people in the top 10. We had 1 and 2. Um, so look, Proven Summons medal. I'm not sure what Proven Summons is. Is that for most popular? I don't know. So the team of the year, Josh Dugan, Steve Turner, Conrad Hurrell, Kevin Locke, Sean Johnson, Ben Hennett, Andrew McCullough, Sam Thwaite, Greg Eastwood. I'm really happy that they didn't, like, they recognised that I've played Kevin Locke at 5-8 the whole year and, um, didn't just throw him in at fullback because he's naturally a fullback. Um, Conrad Harrell, really happy with Santa of the Year, good stuff. Captain of the Year, Peter Wallace. How did Simon Mannering not get it? Brett Player, Brett Morris, good work. Really happy with the Brett Morris signing at the Bulldogs, for people wondering. Fischier, 20 tries, Harrell 12. Vadavai with 11, good stuff there. Hoffman on 7, it's pretty good stuff. Johnson, top try, um, top point scorer by heaps. Uh, he's not up to the El Masri standard, a flat 300 and so points, but we'll take it. And Ennis must be goal kicking. So that's all that stuff done. Look at the other results here. 
See so yeah, the Bulldogs went, they lost. No. So there was all the other results. And we'll take a look at the ladder for the last time. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. But as you can see, we won quite comfortably. Just the three losses in the regular season. Disappointed that we had those three losses, but I suppose it had to happen. Not next season. If we do a next season, it won't happen. But happen this season. That's where I'm going to end the episode. I think we're taking on the Cowboys next. Um, 1v4. I think we can beat them pretty easily if we uh, play our play our game to our potential. But um, yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a like. 15 is what we're going for. And uh, make sure to subscribe. 550 is coming up pretty quickly. If not already past it, hopefully we are. So um, yeah, do all that sort of stuff and leave comments. And I'll see you for the next episode, guys. Which is the qualifying finals against the Cowboys. See ya. Bye.